does the spiritual world exist? Told her to uh, kill me by putting knives all around me. Was told to drop me out a second story window and uh, mom saw me from outside and I was being held by my <laughs> shirt collar out the window and We're casting out the demons, out the, demons. the evil spirits. Hi, I'm Reagan Ram. And I'm Haley Ram. And we are Andromeda Coast, a synthwave, synth pop duo. And now we are taking to a new form of audio. We are starting a podcast, which right hey. now we are calling Even Stranger Things uh, because we love the show Stranger Things. And we're going to be talking about Stranger Things in our few st first few episodes. Um, but we're also going to just be talking about stuff that's even stranger than Stranger Things. There's a lot mm -hmm. of weird stuff on this podcast. We're going to be covering <laughs> culture, <so weird. laughs> culture, life, the supernatural, and a whole bunch of other awesome, amazing things that will probably make you think that we are crazy. Coming, all coming from a biblical perspective. All right, yeah. So we are, yeah, we're Christians. From, so yeah, we're going to cover all these different topics from a Christian perspective. And like I said, our first several episodes are going to be breaking down Stranger Things from a Christian perspective and also an artistic perspective because mm -hmm. not only are we music artists, but we're also writers. We write novels. Um, and so we'll be looking at it from a storytelling point of view as well as a spiritual point of view. And just overall, uh, our enjoyment overall. Right. Just, yeah, as fans <laughs> of the show. Because it's, it's, it's a great show. Mm -hmm. It's I mean, didn't we say that it's now one of our top favorite mm -hmm. shows now? Yeah, definitely a top three. Yeah, so we just decided to start a podcast to talk about all these different things that we're learning because we've been learning a lot and just thought we'd, you know, create a podcast to share what we're learning and what we're experiencing and maybe some other people could learn as well or just there's other be, people experienced be enlightened out there. <laughs> be yeah. enlightened and there's other people experiencing and just don't know how to talk about it or who 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 to talk about it because when you experience stuff in the supernatural, you sometimes kind of feel crazy. At least I know. Like we're getting ahead of ourselves a little bit. Anyway, I, I know we're getting ahead of ourselves. I, yeah, we just need to finish. So, yeah, so. <laughs> yeah, so this is episode zero. So it's kind of, this is just like kind of the prologue. So um, moving on, we just wanted to share a little bit about our spiritual background before we dive into our other episodes where we tackle Stranger Things um, so that you can have some context uh, so that it makes a little bit more sense, I guess. My question to you is how detailed are we getting into this? Like how specific in this oh. episode are we? Are we because I guess as specific as you want to get into it without hurting the innocent or guilty uh, as the case. Well, I wasn't be. sure if we were going to specifically mention that there have been sightings and all that kind of thing. <laughs> I want to believe. X Files. <laughs> we need to have that sign. We need to have that sign behind us. <laughs> I come from a uh, very Christian background. I mean, my family didn't start out that way. Um, there's been dabblings in witchcraft and the occult and all that. And I feel like a lot of people can relate to that because there was a lot of weird stuff that happened in the 80s. <laughs> it was, that's where my parents, you know, <laughs> large part of what happened with them. Um, and so once you open that door, you're kind of, uh, I would say, I don't know, contaminated <laughs> and more susceptible to experiencing uh, spiritual things, uh, more so the demonic. Um, and uh, so... Let's see, my parents became Christians in 1997, uh, so I was about 18 months old at the time, and uh, I had a sibling who had a uh, an imaginary friend who told her to do things, <laughs> such as uh, attempted to kill me, and uh, also just said that she was going to make our mom crazy. And So how did she attempt to kill you? Um, <laughs> did we forget to mention that this is not a child-friendly podcast? No, we did forget to mention that. <laughs> so yeah, it'll be yeah dealing with a lot of dark, serious uh, issues on this 
podcast show, so probably not look, for young children. Yeah, we might look family friendly. <laughs> This uh, this this podcast is not your typical family friendly. It's more of mature. So yeah, the one time was um, friend Chelsea told her to uh, kill me by putting knives all around me, and so that's how I can't remember if it was my mom or my dad found me. I was I was a baby at the time, um, and she had me on the kitchen floor uh, with knives, all the knives that we had in the house around me um and uh thankfully uh, a parent came in <laughs> she's just getting started early in network marketing <laughs> trying to sell you those kinzu knives so the second time was uh sibling was told to drop me out a second story window and uh, mom saw me from outside and i was being held by my <laughs> shirt collar out the window and uh, mom caught me right as you know fingers were releasing my mm-hmm. clothing and uh so there's so, yeah, a- so if you don't believe in the spiritual realm you just think oh this is an e- like a bad sister yeah trying to harm you but yeah it was but no specifically her friend her friend imaginary chelsea, friend chelsea who lived told in the her attic. to do this to you yeah yeah, yeah. and she, i mean she did other things too i mean it was kind of crazy and uh, so as my you know my parents were um had, thankfully had a a uh, a pastor who believed in this kind of thing. Right, because a lot of people, even Christians, don't really believe the spiritual realm exists. So yeah, when I was five, I had I was diagnosed with leg, leg calf perthes, which is a no one knows how children get it. It's a genetic disease. Uh, for two months, I was shuttled back and forth to Riley Hospital, um, doing X-rays every two weeks, um, and. They watched as my my right hip bone was look. It looked like someone was taking an eraser, and just erasing the bone. And uh, of I was let's say I was five at the time, and I was the only one saying, you know, I firmly believe that God is going to heal heal my hip. You know, he's he's going to heal me. I just had I remember having such a strong belief, like just knowing that there was no doubt in my mind that he was going to do this thing, um, and. You know, my parents were concerned. I remember just recently I talked to a uh, one of my sisters, and she was like, she told me she remembered me saying that, and she she remembered thinking, "Oh, that's so cute," because <laughs> she didn't believe either. Like no one believed. Because I mean, it's kind of crazy. Right. There's a big There's... segment of Christianity that doesn't believe God does healings anymore. Yeah, yeah. The gods that stopped. Um, I guess with the the original twelve disciples. Yeah, there's I've heard different dates. There's seventy A.D. There's you know the ending of when all the disciples were murdered. Okay, so people have different <laughs> theories because there's nothing actually written in the Bible that says that God has stopped healing. Yeah, we do believe that God still can and does perform miracles and, and also heals and heals because we've experienced it on on the regular. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, not just me, but you too. Mm-hmm. We'll, we'll we'll get to yours. Um, so then uh, uh, we were on the final visit before we were going to have to get, I was going to have to have a surgery and have a, um, a screw put in to kind of keep it in place. And I was going to end up walking with a limp. In fact, we had a friend who had been going through the same thing um, at the same time. And he, I mean, he still walks with a limp to this day. His one leg is like an inch shorter than the other. We went for the final visit um, and we didn't get a call back. And a week went by, and my mom finally called the hospital, and the doctor said, I don't know how to tell you this. I don't know if there's a mistake on our end, but her hip is fully restored. She has her entire hip is is, is back. And obviously, you can't argue with two months' worth of x-rays. Right, of, but that was, since, right? The, decreasing Right, but the medical worldview is God doesn't exist. Right. So their only explanation was... Our X-ray machines must have been wrong for two months, <laughs> just for you. Just for you. And they were showing a consistent pattern, not a random <laughs> pattern, of your hip bone being erased. Right. Then all of a sudden it was back. Yeah. So then you know. So what's yeah? I think that's harder to believe. I don't have enough faith to believe that. It's, make, it's more logical to believe that <laughs> there was a supernatural healing. I think that happened there because, right? I mean, how do we, how do we know that what you can sense is all there is with your senses? Right, right. right. Your senses can't tell you that, right? There's all kinds of animals that have other senses. 
um, that humans don't have. Yeah. Um, And so, right, it just makes sense that there would be probably things out there that we can't directly observe, right? And even, right, science has found that there's things that they originally couldn't observe, but then as technology advanced, they could observe them. So, um, yeah, personally, I think that that's makes more sense that you were healed than that there was something wrong with yeah, the machine the, for two for months two months and <laughs> in a consistent pattern too yeah and just isolated in me i mean sure yeah. if they had been getting different results from other people right like, and they're oh, all this they're is all, a yeah. pattern mm-hmm. but it was just all of a sudden and, and i just remember being elated and thinking oh, god did it he healed my hip and i was completely i haven't had any problems you know with that since and that's a but that's also a key component in getting healed is you actually have to have faith that you will be healed. You have to yes. believe that you'll be healed. And yeah. we see that a lot with all the healings that Jesus did in the New Testament and the Gospels. Um, it was people believed they wanted to be healed. They believed they could be healed. Um, then God, Jesus would either heal them or he would forgive their sins first and then heal them. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a lot of different ways he went about healing people. But yeah, it depends. On that the... was kind of a common thread was believing yeah. and wanting to be healed. Yeah. So basically, if you don't believe it, it won't happen. So you don't have to worry about it. <laughs> so kind of what led us to this point um, was I had... <laughs> so starting in... January of 2021. Which is also when I started Orpheus Audio Academy. Uh, yeah, I uh, I had asked God to um, clear out anything that was in my heart that would be preventing me from just, you know, being completely filled with him, um, which was kind of a uh, result of reading Mere Christianity by C.S. Lewis. I'd never read that book before. Um, and it was after that prayer that I started reliving memories and having PTSD flashbacks of uh, childhood sexual trauma that had been locked away um, since I was really little. All that is necessary for com- like, you know, communicating through this is that it caused uh, me to be uh, a- in a very dark place uh, for several months. Mm-hmm. Um, and you and I kind of dealt with it ourselves mm-hmm. uh, through prayer and basically our own version of talk therapy because there was no way I was talking to anybody about this. Like, kudos to you if you can talk to a therapist about this kind of thing, but that was not me. Um, I mean, it got to the point where, I mean, you couldn't even touch me because I was, my my brain had um, opened up the memories and so I was, I literally was reliving uh, moments yeah, or, or even... of trauma. Even our um, children, right? Yeah, no no one could touch me at moments. I mean, we'd get through a day, we'd have conversations, and by the end of the day, you could talk to me, and then as soon as I woke up, it was like, reset. Mm-hmm. And uh, <laughs> to some extent, kind of felt like the, the 51st days. <laughs> <laughs> like, doesn't remember, it's like the body, body didn't remem- remember mm-hmm. that uh, we could trust this person. So it is very dark, I was very depressed, um, suicidal. Um, I kind of had to confine myself to the house. I, I just, I just felt it was, it was so dark. It was just very, very dark. And, uh, I would get triggered by memories and, and I, I would get stuck. I would feel stuck. Um, like I couldn't, I couldn't get out of it anymore. And like, I, I knew I was still in the real world, but I would, I felt like I was just trapped to, to a place where I, cu- I couldn't be released from the feelings and the memories that just kept assaulting me. So it wasn't like the extreme PTSD where you're completely transported to a whole new dimension, really, like some people experience. Um, but I mean, I had these images and I would get physical sensations of it, things that had happened. And uh, I would pray, and I, 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 the only, the only thing that could get me out of it was <laughs> Reagan. <laughs> and uh, I mean, there was, there was times that I would pray, and I'd be like, "God, help me out of this." And he's like, "You need to, you need to call for Reagan." And so I'd kind of feel paralyzed, but then I'd be able to text, or you just happened to walk in hmm. the bedroom at that point, and I'd be like, "Oh, thank goodness, he can get me out of this." So, and then we would talk through. And then I know I don't know how long that went on. Well, that went for 
several months, I think. It was several months of just kind of clearing it out. And then I got to some deeper memories, and it just... I was like, there's no way this can be real. And I put it... I was just like, no. And it was like, I... I and like, in my mind's eye... <laughs> You'll hear me say this a lot. <laughs> um, it was like the black vault just closed. I was like, maybe that's the end of it. And about this t- about this time, I got I was pregnant with Halo, our our third child. Um, and at the time, she wasn't named Halo. We hadn't we had decided her name was gonna be something else <laughs> <laughs> until we were like, no, nah, that doesn't fit. Um, so anyway, I thought I was kind of in a safe place. I got to a point where I could be around people. Things weren't triggering me. Um, I wasn't necessarily talking to people involved because that was just, I was like, you know, I need, I need healing and everything. And um, about this time, our son Asher was having nightmares and his behavior had just started to devolve. And he'd previously been this sweet just very loving, kind, gentle, mm-hmm. uh, very obedient boy. And it was like he was the complete opposite of all those things. Mm-hmm. And so long story short, we learned that all of this, all the what we thought was PTSD that you're going through, yeah. I mean, what people would still say is PTSD from a medical standpoint, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the stuff with Asher, it was all spiritual related is all yes demonic yes um influence yeah yeah so i got to a point um i was about seven months pregnant with halo and i had another flashback and it was just like it all started over again and i was like you've got to be kidding me i have i can't i can't i can't i can't do this again um and so i ended up in contact with um a local lady who uh had been Experiencing, she she'd been, uh, I guess she calls that deliverance ministry. I talked to her, and she's the one that started teaching us all about this. Um, the <laughs> fact that uh, Christians can have demons inside of them. This is uh, almost to right. some extent. Some people think this is heretical. All right, you're know, um, growing up in the evangelical kind of church background. You you're kind of just taught that you. Christians, Christians can't, can't be have possessed. demons. Yeah. And, and there's a difference. Possessed. Possessed. Well, that's the thing. You can be oppressed. Oppressed. Externally oppressed mm-hmm. by demons, but you can't have them inside of you. Mm-hmm. So um, through, we try to get some of them out. Mm-hmm. And uh, But also, if you, if you read the Bible, it actually it actually yeah. talks about them. Yes. They're referred to as, as spirits. spirits or evil spirits. Not overtly called demons, because that sounds a little scarier. Yeah, because everyone's afraid of demons and mm-hmm. evil spirits which is stupid because you shouldn't be afraid of them i mean you should mm-hmm. be concerned aware of them and aware, aware of, of what, them yeah but not afraid to the point where you won't even acknowledge them because mm-hmm. then they have you where they want you because then you won't deal with them mm-hmm. and they can do whatever they want because now they just have freedom in your life because you're not gonna you're not gonna approach them because you're too scared so i guess yeah just i mean just sum it up that we got healing from all that yes right we've we're casting out the demons, the, out demons. the evil spirits. We've actually, uh, our Ash- children see them, have seen them. Right. That's a whole other thing. But not since we started no. getting rid of them. And then Asher's behavior has improved. Yes, and majorly improved. You don't have any of those evil flashbacks anymore. Nope. It's completely um, gone. I also had a injured knee from a high school football injury that I was having knee problems. And we prayed for my knee to be healed. Oh. And that was healed as well. So we had all kinds of healing, physical, spiritual. Yeah, so emotional. what's your background with this? Because we've, we've covered mine. So where do, where do you come from? Like, what what is your belief? Um, just, well, happened? my family always believed in the spiritual realm and stuff. We just never, and I can't speak for the rest of my family, but <laughs> myself personally, I just never really felt like I encountered it. I mean, I probably did. I just wasn't aware that I was interacting with it. Kind of just seemed like it was on a different plane. And so it's kind of like... Like getting into Stranger Things that we're going to be talking about, it's like the Upside Down kind of is a good um, metaphor for the spiritual world. For it's sure. like for sure. it's our world, but a demented and twisted version. Well, not the whole spiritual realm, because there's also, right, that's where 
God is and the angels, but uh-huh. the, no, the like evil side, so the evil side of this of the spiritual realm. Yeah, what they're trying to achieve. Right. The decay, right. the it's, death, yeah, right. the destruction, mm-hmm. uh, everything destroyed. And I so, guess. yeah, so, so for basically all my life, I had no in- interaction with the, the upside down that I knew of. Um, yeah, and so, yeah, basically all this stuff. So that's kind of my, my, uh, my story. But you believed you. I always you, believed you it said was there. It has to be in the Bible. It's in the, it's in, it's in the Bible. It's in the Bible, so it has to be there. Yeah. Yeah. So you kind of had more of an open mind, mm-hmm. although you were extremely logical and very analytical. Right. Yeah. yeah I've always yeah I've been drawn to to science and everything. So, but right, science can only tell you what you observe. Um, if it's really all it can do. It can't really prove anything, even because all it can do is tell you what happens right you run an experiment 10 times and you get the same result you can say okay this is always going to happen but then you could run the experiment an 11th time and get a different result and then all of a sudden that theory is broken that's why you keep seeing right scientific theories and ideas are always changing whether it's about health or how different things work right it's not that reality is changing it's that our understanding of it is changing and so just like how right so our senses, right? There's probably more than out there than what we can observe with our senses. So that's a kind of, I guess I was always open to it for that reason and also because the Bible says. There's we, much more, but there's... This is yeah. kind of what we've experienced to know that the spiritual world exists. So in our next few episodes, we're going to be talking about how Stranger Things is really kind of revealing the agenda of um, Satan and uh, the evil spiritual realm. Mm-hmm. Uh, and how Stranger Things was really actually a really good job of depicting that. Not um, just that, but the Christian life as well, right. and how you know different people respond to it, mm-hmm. and also the trauma aspect and all of that. Yeah, it's yeah. So we'll be breaking all that down in future episodes. So if you want to watch those, be sure to subscribe. If you're listening on a podcast platform and you found this interesting, be sure to leave a five-star review. And if you're watching on YouTube, leave any uh, questions you have, and we'll do our best to answer those. I will say the shadows were intentional. And if you like synth pop or synth wave music, be sure to grab our free song in the description, or you can go to andromedacoastmusic.com slash fight on. Have a great day, and we'll see you in the next episode. Uh-huh.